Welcome to Curse ADHD. I'm your host, Jackie. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. You are a one hit wonder. I'm glad you're here. If you are a repeat offender, a member of the Glam Fam, munch a bunch, a munch a bunch, munch a bunch, a munch a bunch. I am hungry. I should have probably eaten before I got started. It is the June LP. I can't believe the month has already passed. We're in July. We're gonna cover everything I made in June and whips and all of those good things because that's what a monthly podcast is for. Let's see, I've got my notes here. So hopefully it won't run off the rails too badly, but I do know that I plan to show a uh, snapshot, no, do a showcase of everyone who submitted their projects for the Tanks and Tees 2023 uh, through either the Ravelry group or also on Instagram. And I got to say, I am just so excited that cumulatively, not cumulatively, collectively between those of you who entered through um, Ravelry and Instagram, but also on Linnean's Facebook group. I was so incredibly impressed. Everybody did, I mean, they did such a great job and I love that we encouraged people to step outside their comfort zone to take on making something for themselves that they would not have necessarily even thought to do. And, you know, that's, I think, part of the beauty of being part of the uh, crochet community is that we encourage each other but you know not just a matter of hey you know we've got somebody to hang out and crochet with but also to, to challenge us and to and see what you can achieve with a hook and some yarn you know what I mean because you know if we don't support our craft if we don't push our craft to the next level then who will you know and I think, uh, and I'm not, I'm speaking for Lynn Ann. <laughs> uh, I think we might do something like this again. I, I, whether it's, you know, next summer for uh, Tanks and Teas, or, you know, we might just pick something else. Just some random thing that, I don't know, just to stretch your beautiful crochet muscles. Anyway, I'm looking forward to showing you the showcase from that. Okay. I know, I know you're wondering, and I'm gonna go ahead and just say it. Yes, I'm wearing lipstick. I decided, so, oh, and, and my hair. Okay, my hair, my hair, my hair, my hair. So normally I wear my hair in twists and some derivative of twists, usually a twist out or, you know, the actual twists. And this time I, after I washed my hair, I braided it and let it dry. I just put it in two long braids and let it dry. And it dried over four days. It takes a long time for my hair to dry. So I decided to do something a little bit different today. And I just pulled it back in a banana clip. And yeah, so this is how long my hair normally is. But you can't tell because of shrinkage, humidity, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, normally when it's dry, it's usually, it sits right out here, but when it's wet, it's down to here. My hair is an enigma. Anyway, so I just thought I would go ahead and just get that out of the way, because I know you were getting go. Something is different. I don't know what it is. Finished object. I think I only had two. Huh? At least that's what it looks like on my notes. I feel like it was more, but I'm going to go with that. The first one was my, you know, my calendar inspiration photo, which is this. It is a short, oop, a short, come on now, Tunisian spiral shawl. And I talk about this shawl pattern a lot because I really do like it. I think it's perfect for beginners. All you have to know is the Tunisian knit stitch and how to do decreases, which is just 
like slip stitching and it starts you know down here and it just grows until in my case you run out of yarn now this yarn I had to look back through my Ravelry to figure out what it was it had been in my stash forever I believe a friend of mine gave it to me back in 20 not even 20 like in 2008 maybe it's it's it was by nitpicks it's been long since discontinued I think it's ca it's called dancing I can't remember what it's made out of but it's very very stretchy and uh don't even ask about colorway names because I don't know but it's two different colorways you've got the green blue yellow purplish and then I had a little bit of this pinky kind of color in here so I just kind of added it throughout sporadically just for a beautiful pop of pink and it feels I'm trying to think of what how I can describe it because it feels like it's a cotton like it it's a blend of cotton acrylic and maybe some nylon or poly because it is very very stretchy it feels cottony I'll, I'll look up and put the you know whatever the yarn content is I'll put it under here just to see if I was right because I honestly cannot remember at all that was my shawl inspiration for June I really like it no it hasn't been blocked and we don't we don't talk about ends that aren't woven in because that's just impolite mm. and we're ladies another finished object it was my second sage brushed tank I believe that was is that right yes because I was working on it MA so I'm gonna pop a picture here so you can see it because I don't have it here and this one was made with two strands of Holst Coast yarn. Let me think. I made that one a little bit differently than the pattern called for. The pattern calls for you to make it in two uh, identical parts, but I actually made it in one long piece and just folded it together. I really like it. I haven't blocked it yet. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I did wear it and I can I can tell that it it's definitely needing to be blocked because it, it, it fit me a little cropped and I was not I was not okay with that. And my third whip, nope, my third finished object is this. Doesn't have a name. This is another T. And I made this for not Hetty. She loves the length. And this is made with Big Twist Vista in the colorway Sea Spray. And I held two strands together. The two, I, the two balls were not lined up the right way. And I just, you know, held it together and it created a marl. But I love the fact that it's a striped, it's a striped marl, you see, and the bottom, I just did two rows of front post, back post, double crochets, and I did the same thing on the sleeves, and I am so glad that Not Hetty liked the top. I did not expect, however, when she came out while trying it on to announce that she would like one in every color. She's like, I didn't want one from each season. I kindly, gently said, okay, we're going to need three skeins to make this size and that the yarn is available from Joanne and because of where she works she gets a 15% off discount so I gave her all of the information that she needed in order to make purchases and then she looked at me like I was crazy I'm like 
I didn't even say no that I wouldn't make them. I just simply told her where she could get the yarn and she gets it at a discount. So we'll see what happens with that. So that is all, those are the three finished projects for June. Now when I first made my list, cause you know, I do, I do try to keep a running tab of everything for the, uh, for this episode. And the, the tea that I just showed you was a whip, but then I finished it because that's what you do. And I started something else. So July, when I did the calendar flip, these are the colors. And I'm also participating in the Summer of Romance Crochet Along that is hosted by Crochet Luna and Crochet Cakes. The theme is sci-fi couples. And the colors in the Doctor and River Song photo that I had chosen matches up beautifully with the colors from the July uh, calendar inspiration. So I said, all right, let's do this. So my whip is, first of all, living in this bag. Because what else would you put a Doctor Who project in? And after trying and failing at finding the perfect did I say finding? After looking, searching, I could not find a shawl pattern that I was happy with. So I decided to take a peek into another make along, which is taking place this week, which is, what is this week? July 9th, it's July 9th through the 16th. And that is, um, sock week, which is hosted by Nitty Natty. And all you have to do is make one adult size sock using fingering weight yarn during this week. So I have decided I'm going to make socks. I know what you're thinking. All right. This is where I have started. I did a, what did I do? foundation double crochet to start and then I I did two rows of front post double po double front post back post double crochets and now I am doing uh, the leg so here's the cuff and now here's the leg and I'm just going to do I, I think it's just going to be stripes um, in half double crochets. Now, <clears throat> I have crocheted socks, plenty, plenty of socks. I'm trying to change up the stitch pattern a little bit and hoping that I'll be able to wear these socks. I like that there's some stretch on it. So we'll see. And here's my colors. Let's see. So there's this one. There's this bone color right here. And I have this green. This other green. And like a, it's a little bit lighter than this. And these are part of the, um, yarn B pigment and fiber uh, yarn I don't know what the it's like a, it's a collection that has like six skeins on it next on my whip list is something that I think is going to get frogged this would be sagebrush tank number three color is called peach the reason why it might get frogged is because 
I absolutely hate this yarn. I, I just hate it. Comp and I think ment mentally, no, subconsciously, I'm comparing it to the previous sagebrush tanks I've made, which this yarn is a little heavier already just with this part of the top being made. And this is not even like this is the halfway part in the front. So just to give you. So you see, like like this is oops, this is halfway halfway in the front. So I'm working on the increase now. But I think I lost some stitches down here. Which see now that I hold it that way, it's painfully obvious. It just goes in a little bit like that. No, I didn't count my stitches. That's not what we're talking about. Stay focused. My biggest issue with this yarn is I hate it. I mean, aside from I hate it, that, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do better than that. It's that I don't like it at all. It no, no no no. It, it I hate it. I hate it. God, it splits so much. Like I'm looking through here and I can see parts like where I pick up three out of the four strands that make up a strand and it's just and it and it you know when you're when you're in your when you're in the mood and you're you know you, you've got your rhythm going and then you got to keep stopping because the yarn is split five different ways and it's just Look, I have found a tank top pattern that I love, that I want to keep making, but this makes me want to stop crocheting altogether. What? It's too much. It's taking way too much joy out of my life. As much as I love the color and I don't hate the feel of the fabric that it's creating. It is heavier than, you know, the, the coast yarns I I'm just I'm I'm just not I'm just not so I think I think I'm gonna frog it last in my whip pile let's see the last time you saw it yeah, the last time you saw it, I was making a t-shirt out of it, but I frogged the t-shirt part of it. Well, I didn't frog it. It is a yarn corpse. And then I started making another sagebrush tank. I love the colors together. And what I, what I need from you right now, honestly, is what do you think of how I'm using the two yarns together. I don't want it to necessarily be randomly spaced, you know, the green stripe, but it kind of seems like that's what I have done. So anyway, what do you think? Right now, to me, the biggest issue is the yarns are both, they're both uh, DK weight, but the ba this is Bamboo Pop and it's less dense than this this one right here which is um oh it's got a cool name it's like hippy dippy no hotty toddy what is it called lazy hazy summer I, I like i like the yarn i don't know so tell me what you think should i just do the purple by itself and you know keep the green for something else I just I really like the colors together but I'm just I'm second guessing myself on this and the I think it's because of the bamboo yarn it's like I want to use the yarns but I don't maybe they just don't want to be used some of them want to use you that is all of my whips and the little stuff I got it's real simple I hit my one year anniversary on YouTube 
Yep, July 7th was my one year anniversary and I I could not believe that it it feels like it was longer than a year and at the same time it feels like it hasn't quite been a year. Isn't that funny? Next the future. All right, so August 1st is the official kickoff to the third, my goodness, the third make along that I am hosting this year. Holy cow. And I was originally going to call it the 80s appreciation cow. However, appreciation is a word that can get misspelled. And I want to make this as easy as possible for people to use the hashtag without issue. So I'm going to recall, recall it. I am renaming it the I love the 80s cal i love the 80s cal i've gotten a lot of questions about what we're supposed to make you can make anything that you want whether it's a pair of socks a hat a bandana a shawl a sweater shorts a afghan blanket granny square whatever you want to make there is nothing that is off limits if you can make it it is welcome the criteria are this one it is running from august 1st to august 31st so please pick a project that you can successfully complete in a month i know it's a bit of a challenge but yeah even if you only make one granny square it counts okay what i am looking for is i want you to make something that makes you think of the 1980s. So if it is yarn from the 1980s, if you use a pattern that was printed in the 1980s, if the color inspiration that you use comes from something from the 1980s. I was looking, because I like to do these things, because you know you can go on Etsy and you can look for patterns from the 1980s on Etsy. You could make, um, oh, what is it? I think I mentioned it before, but you know, like the little um, toilet, those little, ah, the little dolls that would sit over a roll, roll of toilet paper. That was everywhere in the 1980s. If you wanted to make, um, <laughs> if you wanted to make, Something using the colors that were in the Gordon Gartrell shirt from the Cosby show. If you want to make something that is inspired by Jessica Fletcher from Murder, She Wrote. Any, just anything. And there's so many colors that were throughout the 1980s that, you know, you, it's almost like it would be harder to make something that didn't reflect the 80s than did. Does that make sense? I had gotten some yarn. Oh, here we go. There's, I have a little bit of it left. I've got some yarn from Wonderland Yarns and it's called City Lights Reflected on Wet Pavement. I'll just show it to you. There we go. That much more, more. Now, when I first saw it, I, I said that it reminded me of when I was back in the 80s when I would go to the roller skating rink and, you know, I'm skating and 99 Luft Balloons is playing in the background. And, you know, it was a whole vibe. But when I looked at it again, it kind of looks like Pac-Man. Because, you know, you got the black background and then you've got Pac-Man and then, you know, Inky, Pinky, Blinky and Clyde. So if you wanted to get some yarn... That's an option. This one is, again, from Wonderland Yarns. Or, of course, we do have the Glam Fam colorway that is being beautifully, beautifully dyed by Thrifts from Thrifts and Stitches. And um, the order form, I'm going to put a link. I'll put it here on the screen, but I'll also put it in the description box. Uh, she is, I think she, she said that she's working on it this weekend, which, okay, I'm filming all right, I'm filming on Sunday, Sunday the 9th, and this will go up on Tuesday. So she is working on getting the first, you know, batch of, of the orders 
died. So hopefully they'll get to me and I can get them to everybody in enough time before August 1st. So you do not, I'm going to say this, you do not have to purchase this yarn to participate in the crochet along. The timing of the yarn colorway and the crochet along was just happenstance because I wanted I wanted to get the the colorway done regardless. So like that idea came before the 80s appreciation idea showed up. I hope that makes sense. Something else I was thinking of that there's lots of amigurumi um, from the 80s. I have, because of course I do, I'm a weirdo, but Annie's Attic back in the 80s did a, a doll. It's called the Debbie Ann. It's a crocheted doll that looks like the Cabbage Patch. So it's a crocheted Cabbage Patch doll. If you do amigurumi, you can still purchase that pattern. I believe it's available digitally, but you can, you know, that's an option as well. You can make an outfit for a doll. Okay, and see, I'm hearing Dawn of yarn is a sport right now because she tried, mm, Dawn is just funny that way. But yeah, you can create an outfit if you want to for a doll i'm saying there is no limit to what you can make i just want you to be able to i guess explain why whatever you made reminds you of the 80s i hope that that makes sense and it opens up your creativity to many many things i'm going to show you some of the things that I'm considering. Okay, I have two magazines that came okay, out. This one was published in March of 1989. It is called Crochet Fantasy. I don't hate this. I don't hate this, right? Um, I have earmarked two patterns. Let's see. Okay, yeah, one of them is the one that's on the cover. And the other one is this one can you see it's got bobbles on it now i'm not normally a bobbles person for a very simple reason i feel like it's a waste of yarn i had to find out is it this one because you know some of the yarn in these patterns are no longer in existence so i took whatever the name of the yarn was Put it in you in Google in Google to find out the weight and whatever it was made out of, and then took that and put it into yarn. Okay. Oh, ha 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> I accidentally triggered my digital assistant. Anyway, then I put the information into the yarn sub. I think it's yarnsub.com, so that I could find an equivalent. Now the yarn that this is made out of, it's a cotton acrylic blend and it's DK weight. I really like it. I've never done this kind of color work in a garment before. So definitely stretching my creative muscle. I don't know that I would be able to do it in a month though. That's the only downside. Right, the other magazine I have, I can't, what is the date on here? What is the date? Come on. Okay, there's a party going on within these pages. Celebrate summer 88. Okay, so the summer of 1988. So here's the cover. It's also Crochet Fantasy Magazine. I really like this. And Yep, that's the pattern that I chose, which is right here. Let me show you a couple other. So there's this top. Then this one. That. That. I think I would like this if it had straps because 
this right here looks like it's a sneeze away from a very, very public, public incident. And there's this. And that. This one looks weird to me. I think, I don't think it's the sweater that's weird. I think it's her headpiece that makes no sense. And then that, which, oh man, that's super cool. Does that look like something that I could like wear today? I mean, I know it's, mm, maybe it's the shaping of it that that's make that dates it, but. I really like that. Those are just two of the magazines in my stash that I am even giving a second glance to as far as potential 80s inspired um, projects. Again, it is a lot to do in a month. Let's see what else is in here. Is this all clothing? Like, okay, see this? It's just a wallet. A checkbook cover. Man, I don't even have checks. Here's a stuffed animal. Believe it or not, that is not Chester Cheetah. I hope that that helps find or give you some inspiration as to what the I Love the 80s Cal is about. So those of you who are interested in ordering the glam fam colorway which is the miami vice colors please get your orders in as soon as possible so that we can get you your yarn as quickly as possible no pressure please 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 do not take this as a pressure to order the yarn you do not have to you do not have to you do not have to this is just something fun that i wanted to do and yes but i do not want anybody to have any kind of a negative feeling about this because for whatever reason they won't be able to participate in this yarn buy it is fine it is fine i promise it is okay another future plan that i had been thinking about you know before youtube i was a soap maker and have been a soap maker since officially technically no officially professionally since 2010 and I wanted to make a um, just a batch of soap that matched the 80s yarn color. And I, you know, kind of asked if anybody would be interested in that. And the feedback on that has been amazingly supportive. And I am so excited to do this. My soaps are made with uh, plant-based oils so um, they are vegan in the base most of the soaps that I have made are a hundred percent vegan the exception would be the ones that had goat milk in them so for this first foray foray I will be making um, a soap again that it will match either in color or in, I'm going to say feel, as in the scent will be, it'll match the Miami Vice vibe. I've expressed this plenty of times. Scent is a humongous trigger for me for a specific time or whatever. I've got an idea as to what fragrance I want to use to make this particular batch of soap. But if, if there's something that works a little bit better, then that's what I'm going to end up going with. I um, will film the process. I'm Y'all, I'm so excited. I can't, I, I, I just, I'm so excited. I enjoy making soap so much. And when I lost my business, it, it definitely hurt a lot. And as many crafts as I've done, throughout my years crochet has been with me throughout even with the soap making I was still crocheting but it would be nice to have the soaping and the crocheting kind of you know living side by side on my piano keep 
Uh, as soon as I have the first batch ready to go, I will put uh, I will put a listing in my Kofi shop k o d k o dash f i dot com slash crochet hd and you'll be able to order from there. <laughs> if you okay, I want to say this every so so my base recipe has coconut oil, palm oil, olive oil, sometimes rice bran oil, and canola. If, if you don't have any issues with any of those ingredients, then you should not have any trouble with any of the soaps that I make. If you do have issue with that, unfortunately the base oils cannot be changed because every oil does it brings something different to the bar of soap and the way I make soap you're going to have a lot of uh, bubbles you're going to have a lot of um, there's it's going to have like a creamy type feeling to it and it's all because of the balance of all of those oils that this recipe I have worked on for a very long time to get it just right hopefully it'll you know, you'll enjoy it. I touched on everything. Da -da 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 -da. All right, I'm gonna pop the showcase of all of the Tanks and Tees 2023 entries that were on uh, the Ravelry Glam Fam group and Instagram. Enjoy. I've covered everything I was planning to. Editing Jackie is going to hate me. I'm sorry. I love you, girl. With that, I am going to say the following things. If you like this video, please like this video. Please share this video. Please comment below if you have anything that you want to ask. Add something. Say hey if you just want to say hey. All of the the interactions that you as the glam famers can do helps you yeah helps YouTube see that people are watching the videos that there's value in the content and it just helps push our my videos out to other people so in case you ever wondered why you know youtubers are asking you for that that is the reason I don't understand the Al Gore rhythms I just know that the more interactions that you that we can get with our audience in that way it, it just helps so please do that okay and if you want to stick around and become a member of the glam fam please do that by clicking that subscribe button and don't forget to rock that notification bell until next time i ooh, that's horrible until next time I've been Jackie.